Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor, and you're listening to episode 138 of the Listening Time Podcast. Thank you all for listening. I want to encourage you and motivate you to keep on practicing with your English listening and just know that you are improving maybe slowly, but you're improving if you're practicing. So great job. I want to congratulate you on uh, being here today and listening and practicing your English. Today, in this episode, I'm going to talk about the topic of deep thinking, thinking deeply. The reason why I chose this topic is because I was inspired by my last uh, advanced episode that I recorded. I think that episode will be released in February for all of you listening time family members uh, and VIPs. Uh, so it probably won't be released until after this normal episode. But I recorded an advanced episode about solitude about being alone. And it got me thinking about thinking. Uh, when I was recording that episode, one of the things that I was thinking about is about how uh, when I'm in solitude, when I'm alone, I can often uh, think deeply and um, think about things in a more profound way, not just a superficial way. And I think that it's important to uh, think deeply in general about different things. And so I want to talk about that today. It's kind of <laughs> a deep topic, but I'm sure you'll like it. And before we start, remember that if you want to practice with my advanced episodes, uh, where I speak at normal speed, then make sure to sign up to become a Listening Time family member. The link is down below in the episode description. And if you feel ready to start practicing with conversations where I speak to other native speakers uh, from different parts of the U.S., then make sure to sign up for my U.S. Conversations podcast. That link is also down below in the description. And of course, if you need the transcript for this episode, that's also down below as well. And if you like this podcast, then please share it with anyone else you know who might find it useful. And please give it a five-star rating and write a review. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, let's talk about deep thinking. So first of all, why is it important to be a deep thinker? Why is it important to practice uh, thinking deeply about different things? Well, I think there are many reasons. Um, one of them is that when you start to think more deeply about things, you understand more. And you don't just understand the what, you start to understand the why. I think you get my point. You don't just know some information and say, this information is correct. You might figure out why that information is correct or why something is the way it is. And I think that discovering the why is very useful. It's very uh, beneficial for us, for our brains. It uh, sparks a certain curiosity. In English, when we say that something sparks something else, we're saying that it causes that other thing to happen. It triggers 
that other thing. So when I say that it sparks a sense of curiosity, I'm saying that it causes you to be curious. And uh, being curious is often, usually, uh, a good thing, right? We want to know more, explore, discover, etc. That's uh, part of being human, right? So I think that thinking deeply helps to highlight this part of ourselves as humans. So that's really cool. Another reason why it's important to try to think more deeply about things is that you can correct and refine your own ideas. Uh, the word refine refers to uh, improving something uh, little by little, uh, maybe correcting uh, the small deficiencies in something. You're perfecting it. Uh, so uh, you can refine your ideas or you can simply correct ideas that you uh, had before that were wrong, maybe, <laughs> or that weren't as accurate as uh, they could have been. So you can correct and refine your own ideas and reconsider things. Uh, you can um, revisit old ideas or opinions or whatever, and you can change them if you need to. And this is something that many people struggle with. Many people struggle with uh, correcting themselves uh, when they have some idea that is challenged and then uh, there's a contradiction there, uh, but they just uh, maintain their old idea even though uh, they are presented with something new that makes them reconsider uh, if they're not willing to think a little bit uh, deeper and examine their own thoughts, then they might just maintain all of the ideas that they always had and they don't uh, change <laughs> anything for the better. So we don't want to be like that. We want to be able to reconsider things and correct and refine our ideas, our thoughts, etc. So that's another important thing. And another reason why it's important to think deeply is because it can help you make better decisions in life. Uh, you can actually start to understand causes and effects, right? When you actually uh, think deeply about certain actions or behaviors or choices, you can start to um, predict the consequences before they happen because you actually think deeply about that thing. You don't just do it without thinking. You reconsider uh, the thing. You uh, try to explore the causes and effects, the pros and cons. You try to discover the why, and that can help you make better choices and have uh, more satisfactory consequences or benefits from the decisions that you make. So that's another one. And one other reason why you should think more deeply about things is because it makes you more creative and more interesting. It's more interesting to talk to people that are deep thinkers uh, than it is to talk to people who don't really think very deeply and their thoughts are just shallow or superficial. So that's another reason. And how do we become deeper thinkers? 
what are some ways we can expand our capacity for thinking and uh, start to practice deep thinking uh, in our daily lives and uh, get those benefits. Well, I wrote down a few tips here. Uh, the first one is to have a healthy amount of skepticism. What is skepticism? Well, uh, this simply means that you don't just believe everything that you're told or everything that you hear or read. You question what you're told or what you're taught. And notice that I said a healthy amount of skepticism. Of course, you don't want to go overboard here and just not believe anything uh, that anyone tells you at any point. Uh, by the way, the phrase go overboard means that you go to an unhealthy extreme. You're taking it too far, right? So you don't want to go overboard. You don't want to just uh, say that um, everything that everyone uh, teaches you is a lie. Uh, a lot of things are lies. A lot of things are worthy of being examined further and you can uh, maybe develop a better idea upon further examination. But of course, not everything is a lie. Not everything uh, needs to be rejected when you hear someone say it. But it's important to have a healthy amount of skepticism because many people don't have this and when they're told something, they automatically believe it. Or when they hear about something, they don't actually try to go further and uh, understand the why. They just hear um, about that thing and then they just repeat it to other people. And that's not a characteristic of a deep thinker. So you want to be able to um, hear things or learn things and then research them for yourself. Uh, actually learn to do your own research, learn to learn things <laughs> on your own and uh, learn to uh, develop maybe a more complete uh, perspective regarding different things. So you don't just want to read a news headline and then think that you know all about that topic or that event. By the way, the word headline refers to the title of some article, some news article. So many people, probably most people, will read a lot of news headlines, just the title of an article, and then they just repeat that and tell other people about it, but they don't actually read the article. And they definitely don't read the article and then do further research to try to confirm or uh, maybe add to their knowledge of that thing. So most people don't do that. They just read the headline and then they think they know what happened or uh, what's going on about whatever subject. So we don't want to do that. We want to be deeper thinkers and actually take the time to learn, read, and do all that to research uh, certain things. And uh, one last point about this is that uh, deep thinkers know that everyone has an agenda. And you too, me too. That's not necessarily a problem, but it's important to understand this, that 
Everyone has an agenda. Everyone has a reason uh, for doing uh, or saying uh, certain things, and they want to convince you of certain things. Everyone has an agenda, and that's not a problem, but it's important to understand that so that we can be more objective and we can um, do more research on our own and not let other people's agendas interfere with that. So all of this will help you have a healthy amount of skepticism. And another tip that I have is that you shouldn't force yourself to have an opinion about everything. So nowadays, I think that it's expected of you to have an opinion about everything. Uh, if someone says, what do you think about blah, blah, blah? They're not expecting you to say, I don't have an opinion. <laughs> they don't normally accept that answer. They might even get frustrated with you and say something like, how is it possible that you don't care about this? Or how is it possible that you don't have an opinion about that? Uh, because people expect you to have an opinion about everything. But in my opinion, that's not good. Because if you don't know about something, if you've never researched something before, if you don't have any um, interest in a certain subject, you shouldn't really have an opinion about it because you just simply don't care enough or haven't learned enough to have your own opinion. And most people nowadays, they will force themselves to have an opinion about everything. Uh, even if uh, they really don't, they'll try to force themselves to have one. Uh, and when they do that, they're simply adopting another person's opinion. You're just adopting uh, the quote unquote right opinion that you think you're supposed to have. So that's not a characteristic of a deep thinker. A deep thinker is able to uh, acknowledge when they simply don't know about something or they don't have an interest in something and haven't learned about it and they don't need to force themselves to have an opinion just to please other people, okay? So be content with not always having an opinion about something um, so that you don't just rush into opinions and adopt other people's thinking, right? That's not what a deep thinker does. And another tip that I have uh, that uh, will help you become a deeper thinker is to read. I talk a lot about reading. I love reading. I think it's a really beneficial activity. And one of the benefits is that it helps you think more deeply, in my opinion. When you read, you see other people's thoughts. You can compare your own ideas to the ideas presented to you uh, in that book. And of course, you learn about a lot of different things, even if you read fiction, like me. I read mostly fiction. However, I learn a ton when I read, even though it's not a, a nonfiction book. It's not meant to teach me. I still learn a lot. And uh, when you read a lot, you start to make connections uh, between different ideas and different things in different books. Uh, you start to compare things. Uh, you can see how this uh, starts to get your brain moving, right? 
when you read one book and you say, oh, that reminds me of something I read in this other book, or oh, that's different from what this other author said, etc. You start to question things, compare things, you start to shape your own opinions about things. And of course, a lot of that uh, is related to nonfiction, right? But like I said, even with fiction, uh, this happens. So for example, recently, I've been reading a lot of books from the 1800s, a lot of novels from that century, just for pleasure, just for fun, because I really like reading uh, books that we might consider classic. And when I read these books from the 1800s, uh, my mind starts to uh, connect different things uh, from the different books, uh, the different stories. I start to notice things about the society uh, that is described in these different books and uh, kind of subconsciously I've started to uh, compare society then to society now and to uh, learn a lot about how things used to be, what used to be acceptable and not acceptable. And uh, I've also seen a lot of my own faults uh, reflected in these different characters in these stories. By the way, the word fault refers to something wrong, right? Something uh, not good. So my faults refers to um, the things about me that aren't good. So I even see uh, my own faults reflected in some of these characters, and it makes me think more deeply about my own uh, personality, my own behavior, and this is all from reading fiction for pleasure. I'm not even trying to <laughs> learn things. Uh, I'm just reading for pleasure, and uh, reading a lot uh, helps me to think more deeply about different things and this activity really sparks um, these processes in your brain and it's something that I really uh, like about reading. So that's another tip that I have. And one last tip that I want to give is to reduce the noise around you. So what do I mean? Uh, well, allow yourself to be in silence sometimes. I know for many people, this is really hard, but it's beneficial to be able to be in silence uh, for certain periods of time throughout your day, throughout your week. And for example, one thing I like to do is to drive in silence. So if I'm alone in my car, I might just not have any uh, music or podcast or anything playing and just allow myself to be silent in the car and allow myself to think. And when you reduce this noise uh, that we constantly hear <laughs> all around us, uh, you can actually focus on your thoughts and focus on uh, different ideas and develop different ideas. Another thing that I do is I take walks by myself. Uh, I love taking walks. And many times when I take walks, I listen to podcasts or audiobooks. Uh, by the way, I pretty much only listen to podcasts in other languages. <laughs> it's for language learning, not for uh, pleasure in my own language. So I often listen to podcasts for language learning, 
or listen to my audiobooks. However, sometimes I like to walk by myself with nothing else, no uh, headphones in, not listening to anything. And I find that my brain uh, starts thinking. And uh, sometimes I have some deep thoughts when I walk outside by myself uh, with no music, no podcasts, no audiobooks or anything like that. And it's kind of like when you take a shower and you have uh, a lot of good ideas while you're showering. I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about. I also experience this when I walk in silence outside in nature uh, or just on the street. Uh, I also have that same experience. So that's really cool. And then, of course, uh, one uh, last point about this tip is you should reduce the amount of social media you consume. Because when you consume social media, you're only consuming other people's ideas and opinions. And yes, this can be good, of course, but if you do it too much, then you don't really think a lot for yourself. You're just uh, consuming things from other people and not really uh, stimulating your own brain to think deeply about different topics, right? So social media tends to have that effect on us where it's kind of like just watching Netflix. You're not really uh, stimulating your brain in a meaningful way. So uh, I've mentioned this before. Um, many of you might not agree with me, but I think that it's important to reduce the amount of time that you spend on social media that will also help uh, your thought processes and um, you might find more time to think deeply about things. All right, that's it for today. I hope this episode was interesting for you. Remember that if you feel ready to practice with native English at normal speed, then make sure to become a Listening Time family member so that you can get my advanced episodes where I speak at normal speed. And if you want to practice with conversations between two native speakers, then make sure to sign up for my U.S. Conversations podcast. You'll really enjoy that. It's a lot of fun. I talk to people from all over the country about different topics. And of course, I provide the transcript for you with the definitions of keywords and phrases as well. So uh, the links for those are down below in the episode description. And if you like this podcast, please share it and please give it a five-star rating on Spotify or Apple Podcasts and write a review. All right. Thank you for listening to this episode, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of Listening Time. 